good morning. I'm making this bonus round video because I was reminded of a, a teaching that I had received about the Godhead and the divine pairings that took place on this atonement earth. So to me, the Godhead is represented in the six pointed star, like the star of David. It's composed of a blade and a chalice, two triangles, one pointing up and then one pointing down. And for this atonement earth, where the atonement of Jesus Christ took place, that triangle was expanded into a square so that Mary, the mother of Christ, would have the husband protector that she needed of Joseph and that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, would have a wife of who to me is Mariah, but most people call her Mary Magdalene. And so I believe that Jesus, Yeshua, was married and had children here on the earth. <laughs> and so those two divine pairings like expanded the Godhead in a way because they got to pair, partner in a, a glorious life mission with members of the Godhead to further the work, to progress, to make it possible for the atonement of Jesus Christ to happen. So I, this is a bonus video because I didn't talk about them originally, but they are absolutely uh, sacred, holy to me. And I'm grateful for the relationship that I have with them and all the learnings that I have received with them and through them and from them because of them. <laughs> and so I didn't want to disclude them. So I'm, I guess there will be five videos and five is my favorite number anyway. So, <laughs> so that's great. <clears throat> and I was trying to think of how I could possibly put into a video who these individuals are to me, all of them, my holy ones, like some experiences that I've had with them are so sacred I can't fit them into English and it would like cheapen them somehow maybe to to try and describe them with words and just like randomly share them on the internet so because there's some things that I have experienced that I will never speak aloud to anyone they're they're mine like they're holy they're sacred they were especially given to me and so maybe I could share them in spirit or maybe in the flesh but this is not the venue <laughs> for that and so I will share sacred experiences that I've had with each of them because they are sacred individuals but they're just just know like there are some things that I will just hold close and and not share and so thinking of okay what can I say about Joseph and what can I say about Mariah and they, that's how they introduced themselves to me when I met them. And Joseph was actually the first, what I would consider like a messenger to me that, that came to me. I, I was asked to play Joseph's mother in a Christmas play at church and I was going to sing a song about him and read a part that his mother 
like someone had just made it up about like his mother talking about him how he was like the adoptive father of Jesus of Yeshua and it just did not resonate with me <laughs> like I I'm sure that the person who wrote it you know had good intent and like it was beautiful to them but I couldn't say it because it didn't excuse me it didn't resonate with me and so I just I went to my prayer closet and I asked the Holy Ghost to teach me about Joseph about who he is and I had I hadn't received yet about the expansion of the Godhead and and that's that's my learning I don't know if anybody else in the entire world knows that believes that whatever but that's that is my current understanding and so when I was asking about this in my prayer closet and I was pregnant with our fifth at the time so I was I was kneeling in my prayer closet and asking and the Holy Ghost just said well I could tell you about him but would you like to learn from him and I was just like yes <laughs> please <laughs> And so he, he came, he came to me in, in my prayer closet and it was obviously <laughs> glorious, indescribable. Uh, and I just, when I got my wits about me, I asked, please, will you tell me who you are and and what it was like to be the husband of Mary the mother of Christ and what it was like for you growing up did you know were you prepared you know what what was it like to be the father of Jesus like of Yeshua and so he showed me, he, he, he shared with me, like in, it's hard to describe. He was able to share with me his memories and like, you get a lot of information in a very small amount of time with that kind of sharing. It's just like these knowings, these feelings and these, these knowings. And so he showed me his life, what his it, growing up like with his siblings and his mom because remember I was supposed to portray like his mother in this in this play and that's what I was originally asking about and that's something I have absolutely learned in in interacting with my holy ones is that they answer the questions that we ask if we ask general questions we get general answers but if we ask specific questions and continue to ask for further instruction we're given specific answers and further information and if we ask for action steps they give us those too but so for this specifically i was asking what was it like for your mother what was it like for you and so he showed me what he was like growing up and 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 what it was like for his mother and for his community when everything happened with Mary and just yeah who he, who he is just the most gentle honorable protective mighty man and so just like with so much gratitude I thanked him for coming and just felt so blessed by his presence and he was so gracious and and I remember like the the experience closing and just like looking around my closet like oh th th that just happened <laughs> like and just like getting up and be like I have to go make breakfast for my kids like <laughs> life has to go on <laughs> and it was just like okay and I just I just held it in my heart I rewrote the part. 
I didn't even write it down actually I just in the moment at the play you know I was dressed up in my thing and my friend who was directing it she asked me to say the the opening prayer like we met as a cast beforehand and she asked me to say the opening prayer because she was like you just look really holy right now <laughs> or something and I was like okay <laughs> and so I said the opening prayer and um and I did my part, I sang the song, I love singing, it's such a beautiful teaching tool. Maybe you know the song, it's the one about When Joseph went to Bethlehem, I'm sure he took great care. And it's just such a sweet, simple song. And <clears throat> and so afterwards, and I, and I felt him, I felt his smile uh, as I was sharing about him. And so then afterwards, one of my friends came up to me and she like was like almost had like she had like tears in her eyes and she was like, that was incredible. You know him, don't you? And I just just like <laughs> I checked in and they were like, yeah, you can tell her. And so I said, I, I got to meet him. And she just immediately began to cry and she said that while she was watching the spirit just washed over her and told her that 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 I had gotten to meet him in preparation for this uh this Christmas play and so then of course I just felt like what a beautiful second witness to me she had no idea. Like I hadn't said, I hadn't told anyone what was happening or what had happened, but we got to share that gift. Like I got to share all of that amazingness with her, our hearts knit in that moment. And I got to share that with her as she second witnessed what I had received. And it was just so beautiful. So I'm grateful for him and all that he taught me and what he showed for me is possible because I hadn't experienced it quite like that before, before he came. So that's Joseph. And this is already a really long video and it's never going to load. <laughs> okay. And then Mariah. So... Oh my, are people already coming out of seminary? I'm um, I'm waiting at, at seminary for our oldest to come out. That's why I'm just like sitting in the car. But, okay, so Mariah. Some of my friends had been asking about my some of my Zion sisters had been asking about and learning about Mary Magdalene and I had already believed that she was the wife of Jesus Christ um I can't even remember when I I think I was like in high school when I was like okay why would Jesus appear to her first out of anyone and I just knew it I just knew that it was because she was his wife. And I think also my dad had told me, pointed out to me about that that word, touch me not, is actually hold me not. Like when Jesus says, touch me not, I haven't ascended to my father. It actually means hold me not. And I was like, she was like rushing to embrace her husband. <laughs> and he was like, wait, back up. Like I can't touch you yet or whatever, which, there must have been reasons for that too. Obviously he had his reasons, but so I just always believed that she was his wife. And I also believed that they had children because why would that bloodline be so meticulously recorded and especially preserved and orchestrated to end with him? No. Plus, like Enoch and Noah, like they had received very specific promises about the bloodline of Christ lasting all the way 
until the end of all things. And so why would that pure bloodline end with him? It didn't. She is the Sun Grail, the Holy Grail, just as Mary, the mother of Christ, was. She also, her bloodline was purpose, pur perfectly orchestrated to receive his seed and then carry on that that bloodline until the end of all things. And so I absolutely believe that there are descendants of Jesus Christ walking the earth today. And so she is she is love. I have a special name for all of my holy ones, but especially my mother's. She is the goddess of love. She is Venus. She is... I've, I've heard other... So, something that's hard for me is... I guess it's not hard. I'll say it. Something that I love is when I receive something in my prayer closet, a knowing, and maybe I'm not in my prayer closet when I receive it, but <laughs> that's just like the way that I think about it. And then later I find out that whole cultures of people, whole generations, oh, hey, uh, <laughs> I'm going to finish this just a second, okay? Uh, also believe that same thing. And that has happened to me over and over and over again, especially with my mothers. Because the way that they're recorded or have been recorded in the scriptures isn't like the scriptures that I read all growing up aren't what I have been taught personally about them. And so this is especially true of Mary Magdalene. And so I'll say, I'll, I'll be talking about her with a friend and they'll be like, oh, did you read that in The Beloved Companion? Or, oh, did you hear that on such and such, you know, blog or, you know, YouTube channel or whatever? And just like, other people think that? Like other people know about that? <laughs> and so... I guess I'll end my, my video with that so that uh, I can be done. But I just, I wanted to share these two also holy ones to me with you <clears throat> in this bonus video. Okay, I hope you have a great day.